So apparently this song is supposed to be about Suga's love for music and his passion for becoming a musician. I'm also very passionate about music, so that means we're supposed to be together, right? Right? We should be together too. The piano. Yeah, so... I don't know why this isn't pausing correctly. Um, there's been this long thread going through all the Wings clips, if you haven't watched any of them, culminating in First Love, Sugar breaking into a music store and finding a piano, and, and it lights on fire after a little bit after a little while but there was actually a thread going through several of the other videos where they see kind of like quickly in their mind just like a uh, a, a piano on fire so see i think i relate to sugar more than anybody else in the group just because of the way that we view music So I don't know if I'm reading this correctly, but it seems to me like this last part was about, was almost like the piano talking to him and telling him that like, don't worry, even if you're not going to play the piano anymore, I, I take different forms of just like musical expression in general. And that musical expression, that, that passion towards music will follow you around wherever you go. So don't worry about it. Even if you're not going to play with me anymore, there's still something that, that matters in the back of your head. And my existence will always be important to you because I open the door to something bigger. <laughs> Yeah. And music will always take him back. Uh, nice. mm, mm, really nice vocal layering right there. Let's go back and hear that again. The lyrics in this song are like hitting me in the in the feels, you know what I mean? Like I wonder if people that aren't um super into music can relate as strongly to this song because it is definitely very specific to his love for music and the piano more specifically but um i assume that anybody that can relate to having a strong passion for something and having that and having your passion fade away um and then come back and then and then fade away it's like leaving a hole inside of you you know so so even if it's not music if it's a sport or if it's if it's a person if it's just anything I assume that you could relate to his message and the way that he's saying it. <laughs> It's kind of sad, honestly. Just, and I'm not sure it's the content that's as that's so sad as much as it's the way that he's telling the story that makes it. You, you, you feel, you empathize with him. You know. Like he, the way that he articulates it, the way that he puts the message out there, you like feel connected to him. So it's it's really, you know, it pulls at the heartstrings. And the lyricism, just the words that he's using. Like. <laughs> 
없었던 절망의 깊은 수렁에 빠졌던 그때 내가 널 밀어냈고 널 만난 걸 원망했다 오늘 꿈꾸지 내 곁을 지켰지 말아냈다 그러니 절대 너는 내 손을 놓지 마두번 다시 내가 널 놓지 않을 때 내가 나의 탈세 그리고 내 삶의 끝그 모든 걸 지켜봐 너일 테니까 내 기억의 구석 한 켠에 자리 잡은 갈색 피아노 어릴 적 집안의 구석 한 켠에 자리 잡은 갈색 피아노 Ooh, what a beautiful piece of music, honestly. Is there more? No, that's it. Okay, that yeah, that was beautiful. I mean, just the lyrics that the way that the lyrics represented his emotions were perfect, first and foremost. But the way that he told the story is really what made this um, so amazing. It, it's just the fact that, and it reminds me of um, that other song that I reacted to a couple weeks ago, the the last. It's all about his ability to just like he's a storyteller. You know, at the end of the day, he's a storyteller, and he's. It's not about structure. It's not about going from verse to chorus, intro, verse, chorus, whatever, bridges. It doesn't matter. What he's doing right now is he's starting in the beginning of a story. He's trying to take you to the end of that story and make you feel the things that he was feeling throughout the course of it. And I think he does a really excellent job at that. It has a lot to do with the way that he actually says the words. His delivery of the message, but also the lyrics themselves, and just the passion behind them. Like it's a song about passion, and you hear the passion in his voice. Like it would feel so empty if you couldn't. You know, if he was singing about how much he cared about something, but the passion wasn't there in his voice, it would feel meaningless. But he he has it. Like you know, he makes you just. You know what I'm saying, right? Like I, I just thought that was excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, let's just jump right over into uh, the live version. One, two, three. Uh, how long has this been up here? I got so immersed into the performance, I didn't even realize this was up here. And I also didn't realize it was in a different language, and that's not on my screen. That's actually on the recording that I'm watching. And let's just forget about that. Go back a little bit and ignore my stupidity. And let me just say that, you know, just that with that one breath that I was noticing before, but I didn't actually say anything about it. But the way that he uses his breath with the microphone is, like, really different than most people. And I think that he uses it to emphasize certain moments of emotion really well and I think that it's almost like something I've never noticed with anybody else it's almost like a, a technique to his own you know like the sugar technique like here I'm gonna breathe at different volumes during different times and you're gonna feel something because of my breath like what but also like message that I feel like was written for me like I'm pretty sure that sugar wrote that song for me and don't go into the comments, no, I didn't write that song for you. <laughs> he clearly wrote that song for me. He's been, you know, interested in my friendship for, for a long time, and... And this is his message to me. So I'm gonna go call him. And see if he wants to get some Chipotle. Alright guys, Anyang. <laughs>